So it's been a busy time for all of us. Obviously, I obviously legitimately I legitimately think I've eaten every meal the last two days in this chair at this desk. <laughs> and the Chiefs haven't really rewarded us with a lot of news. Um, but there was one piece of NFL news that I just confirmed that you guys haven't seen. I didn't tell you what it was yet. Yeah. And it's going to be the cold open. I've been and then in we're my not going to talk about it anymore. Sure. Because the rest of the show, we got things to talk about. And this isn't really a show topic. But the fact that I get to break this news and now millions of adoring fans get to uh, see you guys or hear you guys both react to this news in real time made it great. cold open worthy. Freaking great. This is from the New York Times. This is your employer, Nate. Uh -oh. Breaking news. Uh-oh. NFL star Aaron Rodgers uh -huh. and Jesse Ventura, the former Minnesota governor. Is that what? How you it? What? Top the running mate list of the long shot candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Kennedy said he had been speaking with Rogers, quote, pretty continuously for the past month. Is this about politics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He 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 is apparently heavy in the running uh, to uh, to be RFK's VP. I don't know what that means for Zach Wilson, but we're going to talk about the Chiefs now. This is Casey Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. I'm Hello, sorry. welcome into Only Weird Games. <laughs> Nate, I set a rule. I said that was in the cold open, and then it's not the rest of the show. And Seth's not. Seth's lips have not unpursed, and I think that that's probably wise. But I wanted to share the news of the day with you both because I think that's funnier than Irv Smith. Although Irv Smith and a lot of other things are pretty interesting. Joshua Briscoe, Seth Kaiser, Nate Taylor, three uh, delusional boys with you here today on uh, KC Sports Network. Hi, fellas. Are you, How you doing? Are you I'm saying doing well. is, is he is... Hold on. Nope. <clears throat> Seth, Seth's turn. Not Seth's turn. Sorry. No, 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 no. no. Is today. he? No, is he, rules. Is he promoting a candidate not named Joseph Biden or Donald Trump? Is that what I, I just don't gathered? Think he's promoting. I think he's running alongside allegedly, but be. that was from the cold open. <sighs> Seth, your thoughts? I only have one thing. Josh Norris tweeted, "How long until Aaron Rodgers convinces RFK Jr. to appoint Randall Cobb and Alan Lazard to his cabinet?" <laughs> See, there it is. There that's it is. that is the of people who hey. are really nervous about what the next five minutes hey, were going to be, and that's the joke we needed. That's the, the boys got to come along. Hey, if it's going to be, look, if I'm going to, if I'm going to do this, yep, just know we, Randall, Randall's, Randall's one phone call away. We did it. We found a joke that people, no matter how far this way <laughs> oh, God, or how no. far this way, will oh, all God. find funny. I didn't know we could do it, but we've united America. You're welcome. Wow. Yeah. How about that? We united America before the Chiefs traded Legereus Sneed. Who would have guessed? <laughs> it really has been a bizarre yes, it 36 has been. hours or yes, whatever it's yes, been. Yes, Lord. We, we finished our show on Thursday, and then about an hour later, the Chiefs re-signed Drew Tranquil, a deal that the three of us have not yet collectively talked about. Mm -hmm. Since then, they did get the long-term deal done with Chris Jones, which is where we will begin things today. Uh, then we'll get the latest we've got from Nate on Legereus Sneed and where that trade market stands right now. And then some of the other moves, Irv Smith, again, Drew Tranquil being back, Dion Bush being back, which I yeah, actually baby. think is kind of interesting. I accidentally wrote like 350 words about that without even trying because I'm sick, dude. <laughs> Seth just looked at me like I am a sicko, and I am. But Seth, I can't explain how how bored and stressed I have been <laughs> since 11 a.m. on Monday. I've been in a constant state of not really working that hard, but absolutely we being like, sleuthing through Twitter to make sure that I can be working at a moment's notice. It's very unhealthy. Sure. You sound okay. So um, this is just for the podcast. Okay. Um, shout out to my guy, Pete Sweetie. I see you, baby. Pete Sweetie last night asked me where are we having dinner date. And I said, I gotta save it for I gotta save it for only weird games. Um, so hopefully Pete's listening. We had dinner, Seth. Me, Holly, Hayden, at Joe's Kansas City. You like the you house? at the gas station. I left the house on the first day of free agency. That's how you know, kids. I'm a savvy veteran. Because I knew what nothing coming down the next two hours. And well, Holly's that's not true. You, the, the Chiefs, you just have to look at their social media. They signed Chris Jones, as they remind <laughs> us, 17 times. And look, hey, 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 by the way, the social media team, the Atlanta Falcons released, you know, a picture of, you know, we do not sign players. We just announced them. The Chiefs social media team is not to blame for the lack of activity. They've been told to do all this. Yes. Please don't get mad at them. That hey. said... 
<laughs> do we, do we, hey, we signed Chris Jones. I'm like, yes. Yes. You did, and I'm excited, hey. and I'm happy. That was also a day and a half ago that we found out, and now it's legal tampering period of other guys. Were we were so. we part of the woo plant? Yes. And keep wooing him on <laughs> social media. Oh, good Lord. Can we be done wooing? No, like, baby. I, we Woo wooed $90 cows, million. Dollars. If Jazz gave me $90 million, she would never have to be nice to me again. She'd like, never speak to you again. Are you kidding me? Yeah. But you gotta, she, but, I would be like, you know what, babe? I get it. That $90 million worth of love, that's a lot of love. But it's, but it's between you and D. It, it's Deion Dawkins and you. It's, it's between Deion Dawkins and you and the quarterback. And you know what's going to make that push? The wooing. The wooing <laughs> back in March is going to get you to blow Deion Dawkins up, okay, on a gotta have it third down. All right, that's what it takes. Okay, we're you're playing checkers. The Chiefs social media team is playing chess. Okay, can we put more highlights out? Yes. Can the franchise still continue? Yes. Was the Super Bowl a month ago? Yes. Does he need another highlight tape? Yes. Okay. Did he sign the contract? <laughs> yes. Does he need more love? Yes. Okay. He needs to be wooed and loved at all times. Is he going to bring that wooing energy back to his press conference? Not necessarily. No. Well, it's going to be pretty level-headed, pretty calm, pretty chill. He's been partying for 36 hours, <laughs> and can you imagine? <laughs> I I cannot imagine the – the what was the signing bonus? Uh, It's 60, basically, with the pen to paper. $60 million, obviously, tax – Right. Yeah, roughly roughly he got he roughly got fifteen to twenty million dollars in his bank account when he put A plus next to Clark Hunt's name on Twitter. And that is and that is a I mean, I'd give someone an A plus for that <laughs> amount as well. Um but I it is interesting because we haven't done a show since Chris signed. Um and that's why it's on the neat thing, I just realized. Yes. But uh -huh. You, I, I can't mean, even imagine. You just realized. Well, and so. You were in this formation for like 10 minutes before the show with the graphic there. I don't want to. Yes, okay. yes, I don't yes, know don't how worry, many buddy. times I have to disappoint you before you lower your <laughs> expectations. Like, I, I hate to do this because I know you hate it when I do this, but it took Jazz like three years to figure out, hey, you know what? I'm going to have to lower my expectations a little. And all... yet, you sit here and you hope against hope that I'm going to change. Men don't can we change, get, can Josh. We, can, we please, can we please get some mic emojis in the chat right now, by the way, for Seth's audio quality? He's yes. going handheld with a pop filter on the highest quality mic that he owns. He sounds spectacular. Just mic emojis in the chat for everybody, please, just, just to really try to make Seth believe that he can change after years and years and years. You're of, trying uh, to woo me. I see what you're doing. I'm wooing you. I'm wooing, I'm wooing, wooing you, you, baby. I'm trying hey. to get that A-plus on my report card. <laughs> Everybody's got to be wooed at some point. Look Look, so, at this uh, nice, look at this nice restaurant I took you to. Woo. <laughs> I like that. I like turning woo into the onomatopoeia that it is. Woo. woo. That's, well, uh, that's Clark Hunt waves. He, he waved his magic pen over a contract that um, is a five-year deal in name. It, it is effectively, and there are some actual things in here that I do want you guys to, to help me dig into because there's some fun, interesting stuff. But what it kind of boils down to is very, very, very similar to Aaron Donald's deal when he was on the brink of retirement. It's three years, $95 million guaranteed. Um, there's a little flexibility in the guarantee there. It's not five years, $100 billion, and the, the average annual value of it all is not that much. Um, the what are you talking about? It's $800,000 a year more than Aaron Donald's. It's $300,000. It's three hundred thousand dollars more than Aaron. Sorry, your numbers it might be right. the The number that stuck for me was three hundred thousand dollars more than Aaron Donald in that three year guaranteed window with yes. three one hundred thousand dollar workout off season bonuses. So yes. if Chris Jones yes. wants to make more than Aaron Donald in these three years, he's got to be there for the off season workouts. Correct. That's my that's my favorite wrinkle of it. But essentially, three for ninety five. If you guys have anything on the flexibility the Chiefs have in terms of what it would look like if it was just two years. That's one thing. But also, what did you guys think when you got the sort of final quote unquote real numbers of three for 95 with some room for the Chiefs to uh, restructure and renegotiate back in the, the back end of that deal or just just head out after three? Um, can I be 
upstanding professional reporter for Please? 20 seconds. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, you have the Las Vegas Raiders to thank for Chris Jones signing a contract. It It's always fascinating when you get this close to free agency. And some people said, well, Nate, you said 57% on the last episode, you know, essentially two days before this was agreed upon. What I understand, ladies and gentlemen, is that the closer you get to free agency, the closer, and what I mean by that is Monday being the legal tampering period, the closer you get to that, the closer you get to getting a contract that can surpass what the Chiefs are willing to offer, which in reality, the Chiefs moved in such a considerable manner that Clark Hunt couldn't see Chris Jones in a Las Vegas Raiders uniform, in a Houston Texans uniform, in a Cincinnati Bengals uniform, and if we just want to throw another team in there, the Chicago Bears. Now, I don't know how serious the Bears were, but the three teams that I mentioned previously were all willing and preparing to have a chance to legally tamper with Chris Jones from the audio version of that. Um, that's that was emphasized with quotes of my index finger and my middle finger. So ultimately I don't think the chiefs were thrilled about a five-year deal. But was the Houston Texans going to give a five-year deal? Yes. Were the Las Vegas Raiders going to give a five-year deal? Yes. So at that point, you've given some leverage to the agents and to Chris. You can only make this deal appropriate for the team with a five-year structure, but they have to concede the fact that, yes, you're going to make the most money technically of any defensive tackle in the NFL's history. So the Chiefs felt they did the right thing, but when push comes to shove, we don't want to see a team. What's that, Josh? Legally tamper with quotes, Chris quotes, quotes, quotes. with Chris Jones. One more. And Chris Jones has said it repeatedly, and this became, this was true from the beginning, the middle, and the end. He wanted to remain with the Chiefs. He knows his value is probably at its best monetarily and from a football standpoint with the Chiefs, and he really didn't want to leave. Um, so all parties are happy, but it took a long time to get to this negotiation. And yet Chris still beat the norms of contract negotiations, even between star NFL player and billionaire owner. Chris Jones won. It is a fact. We can stop there no matter how we got to the conclusion. And I know we're about to get into that. Chris Jones beat the system. And that is so rare in today's era, even as a cat rises $30 million. I know people said, well, this deal wouldn't have happened, Nate, if the cap didn't go up that high. No, 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 no. Chris beat them at every turn, and he's irreplaceable. And the sooner, the sooner Clark Hunt realized that, the better off the Chiefs were. And he realized that before free agency actually begins. So he deserves a little bit of credit in the negotiations. But honestly, um, the risk is always given to the player, and yet the player won this time. And I just I cannot stress enough how rare that is. My one little thing before I pass it over to you for your full-on uh, uh, dig through it all, Seth, is that Chris Jones won because of how unbelievably good and valuable he is at football. He did not win on diplomacy. He did not win on negotiation tactics. He had to play it out last year. He had earned that money last year. And he was so damn good that the Chiefs looked around and said, yeah, man, we got to pay you because what are we going to do without you? 
And I, I do think that is a tremendous, tremendous testament to the player that Chris Jones is. And in my book, not necessarily a testament to anybody else involved. Seth, what do you think? Three for 95. Uh, we've been talking about Chris Jones. You, you've been, I think, pro Chris Jones in my notes uh, over the past few years. What do you think both about the deal and also the fact that the Chiefs are now building around Chris Jones and their defense for the next three years, which was very much n uncertain the last time we did this podcast together? Right. Well, first and foremost, and I'm taking a risk by saying it this way because I feel control over what is happening currently no, during no, my baby. time is about to get wrested from me. <laughs> do it. Do one it, baby. One might say, one might say that he Kirk Cousins did. <laughs> <laughs> one might say that he and yet was remained willing, healthy. <laughs> he was willing to bet on himself and take an abnormal amount of risk onto himself in terms of health. Yes. Um, because, you know, he could have tore his Achilles last year. He could have, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? And he didn't. He continued to play at an absolutely elite level. He once again closed things out in the playoffs. Like, I mean, and that's where, you know, people talk about Kirk Cousins has, like, become... I don't think we need to go farther into it, but he's become the ultimate. He's going to end up making more guaranteed money than Tom Brady did. And that's not just going to be, I mean, part of that's the salary cap and how that works, mm -hmm. but it's, it's also still funny to hear you say that. It's true. It's right. 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 But it's because Kirk Cousins was the first player who was willing to get franchise tag. I think it was two years in a row where he said, nope, long-term deal or not, or I'm not doing it. And he didn't sit out. He took every dime of that guaranteed money. Yes, and then he, he did, did it again the next year. Yes, and then the year did. after that, the team was like, so we're not going to pay him $40 million because his performance was that much. Praise the Lord. And then last year, I'm sure the Vikings offered to extend him even before he got hurt and all that. He was like, nope, I, I, this is what I think I'm worth. And most NFL players, because they understand the risks, they're not willing to really lay it all out there. And that's not a criticism, by the way. Right. The risk-reward analysis is perfectly acceptable especially so for, for non-quarterbacks especially for non-quarterbacks whereas the only time that you maybe could get a player who could do it this way is a star pass rusher maybe, maybe a with a maybe a receiver maybe yep. maybe and with receivers with how many good to great new ones are coming into the league every year teams are more likely are just as likely to trade elite receivers as they are to extend them. Mm. I mean, you look, I mean, two of the best five receivers in the NFL in the last five years are Tyree Kill and AJ Brown. And that's just Devontae Adams. Yep. Devontae yeah, wow. Adams. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Three, three of three the best, best five, five receivers yeah. in the past five. That is crazy. Man, you made my point even stronger. Um, and I don't think we've seen a receiver in the modern era kind of try Kirkin it. Right. And that would be quite the risk. I could try, but it doesn't seem like that's where that's headed. And I think that's where with, with quarterbacks, they hit that perfect note to where you can't really trade them, although Washington should have at a certain point. But anyway, with what Chris realized and what Hunt realized, and I think Chris has always believed in himself and, and all these things, but with Clark Hunt, I think ultimately for all the conversations surrounding Chris Jones, and I've said this before, I will continue to say it. Maybe the, maybe the narrative around him will change. I kind of doubt that now that he's on this massive a contract, I fully expect if he doesn't have six sacks in the first two weeks or, or even three sacks in the first two weeks or two sacks in the first two weeks, Chiefs Twitter is going to tear him apart and it's going to be a whole thing and it's going to be whatever, I guess, whatever. But I, Chris Jones has been looked at as a really, 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 really good, even great, but not generational player for the last five years. And to that, I say, Pah! it's not true. He's a generational player who happens to be playing at the same time as the greatest defensive tackle to ever live. And that's where he's like the Josh Allen of defensive tackles. But I only, like he's, that. But Seth, he's only got one Super Bowl ring. I mean, come on, <laughs> Seth. I, I like he's the Josh Allen of defensive tackles. Because I don't he's, know. Like, generational is is kind of a tough metric. And GOAT right. is a bad metric. Because yep. do, do you mean the greatest player of his generation? Or do you mean he's on the all-generation starting lineup? Or is he right. blah, blah, blah? But... That, I think, is all fair, certainly also for the impact that he's had. I, your point about the future is also sort of concerning, and I think I think also part of, hey, you're, you're paying an older player way more money than the Chiefs ever pay. Can I, right. can, I can I tell you what was most telling about these statements through the team? 
uh, as I try to wipe my glasses, but free agency is just moving way too fast. Jord- Jordan Foote has said that he tweeted about Chris Jones being Josh Allen and um, that we have stolen his entire flow, and um, I'm going to review the tape. Who? Sorry, Jordan. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Jordan. Um, love you, Jordan. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jordan. I... So, so the two the two things the two things about the statement from the Chiefs yesterday in the Hullapalooza, Chris Joe signed a contract. More, more, more. Um, you know, internet. What up, Hopper? What up? We got both dogs in. Renee's out of town right now. I left the door open to do this podcast, and I laughed so hard. Both dogs came to check on me. So, um, 21 questions. Shout out to Kit. Best <laughs> question was about the dog. Um, so. Y'all can get her time next. Go ahead, Nate. When, with that said, two things. Clark Hunt said Chris belongs, in quote, in a Chiefs uniform, which I thought. You talking about, you talking about Mr. Davis? Hmm? <laughs> You you talking about Mr. Davis, aren't you? <laughs> How about that? Mark Davis got you to open your pockets? What? And then the second quote from the um statements released through the Chiefs is that Brett Veach called Chris Jones a Hall of Famer. It's done, guys. It's done. We now have, we now have evidence. We have certified bulletproof evidence. Clark, he's a hall of famer. And I'm sure he said that to him. Oh, I can, I can, I can confirm that he said that to Clark. Nice. Well, and that's, and that really is that, that ties into my second point. So the, the way to think about Chris Jones in the last five years, he is the, oh no, pass low. You can doubt the Cats brothers. You can disrespect the Cats brothers, but in the end, you'll have to deal with the Cats. Ladies and brothers. gentlemen, I never dis. I never dis. No, they, I never. The end, I never disrespect the Cat brothers. I just said you can't have your client out here asking for a raise in front of. In front of yeah. <laughs> and so, here's what I would. I, I I do think you know Chris earned this largely through his through his pay. And his agents supported him. There's different ways of, of being a good representative, I guess. And one of them is just saying, hey, this is a risk that maybe you shouldn't take. But sure, why not? Go for it. And maybe if you play at a Hall of Fame level multiple years in a row, it'll pay off. And that's what he did. And then, uh, you know, in terms of also staying healthy, et cetera. Because all the risk was on Jones. Here's I'm what so- I would say. I'm if you, sorry, if you I'm back- sorry, hot water music. Um, my glasses are just out of control right now. But I, I, I want to be clear. His they- first name isn't Jesus. What a weird thing to say. Hot, hot water music. Do you? You understand? guys have to. You both. Both. This isn't I'm just not. a Seth problem. It's not just a Seth problem. You both have to stop responding to comments without saying what the comment is for everyone else who has well, not he seen said, or heard the comment. Sorry, he said hot water music. Said I'm assuming it's a he. Uh, said Jesus Nate. It's hard to watch. <laughs> Jesus Nate is hard to watch at times. I'm sorry, my glasses are fogging up because it's so hot in here. Look at me but, and Seth. I had dogs but, in my frame a second ago. Exactly. Yeah. And also, do you understand hot water music that when I go to a level, it is with full <laughs> earnest and sincerity. Do you realize they had this man come out in a black SUV <laughs> and say, I'm just asking a billionaire to give me a football player a raise before I go make these sick children feel better. Do you understand how chaotically do you understand yeah, that how was chaotic weird. that is? But, yeah, by no, the that way, was weird. By the way, the season started um the the, the next day, the literally the next day. And by yeah. the way, he had not practiced at all. Okay, he was not with the team. And guess what? Guess what? He won. He still won. He still. Flipping one. Do you understand how absurd that is? Sorry, my camera's fogging up. Let me let me take a breath. <laughs> it's getting hot in here because it's free agency. And I went to Joe's in the middle of free agency on opening night and got away with it. By the way, Joe's Kansas City, that that ooh, child, that burnt in Z-Man sandwich on Texas toast with some spicy 
barbecue. That's right. That's exactly right. That's the Kent Swanson special. I have not wavered from that in years now. It it might be the greatest sandwich that's ever existed. Nate, it's, you and I are pretty close. Do you want to go? You want to just go go get one here, maybe in a night or two. Uh, we can. Seth, you're great. invited for sure. But it's, it's oh, warm outside. We can have the dogs. You know, I I, I think Maple and Hopper need to meet one another. It was I something I was going to text other. you in a personal exchange, but I've done it <laughs> from a broadcast perspective now, and there are several people listening. So that's fine. Uh, if this doesn't too. happen, Holly will blame you. That's fine. I'm in. No, I'm 100 percent in. I've I've got two dogs and more free time now. Let's let's have a dog yes, meet. And it was and it was the gas station location because my son understands even at the age of eight, we gotta go to the gas station location. I gotta walk in and be blown away by these smells. Did you realize, kids, that the last thing Marquez Valdez Scantling did before he left town was to eat at Joe's at the original OG <laughs> location? Really? This is the kind of reporting you can't get anywhere else. Because people at Joe's told me this. That rules. Go I, ahead. I, I no, that's great reporting. Go that's ahead. what I would do tell if I were on my way out of. If I was on my way out of town, um, I think that's what I would do. I mean, you you can't. I mean, he probably probably. I bet he got some burnt ends to go eat in the eat in the car. I'm not going to make any jokes because we're in a good place right now. We really um, are. We got to hit the rest of the things that have and haven't happened. But Seth, go ahead and put a put a bow on it for Chris Jones. Sure. Let's take a um, break. <sighs> How does he not see it coming? Oh, you know, sometimes I mean, Tucker, Tucker doesn't just, either anymore. Sometimes he just fumbles the ball, and you know, there's nothing you can do. You deliver a perfect pass down the field. Just talking Speaking about of Chris MBS, Jones, I guess. Yeah. Um, so here's 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 what I would say about Chris Jones. I, this is a new what fresh hell is this? By the way, like, what what new way is this to toy with me? BJ already did it to me earlier. So uh, Tucker. Uh, breaking news, Tucker is on his phone. Things are happening. There's just too much going on right now. Has and anybody so, signed a, a ridiculous contract of late? Not Holy yet. Holy smokes. Go ahead and put it's, a bow on the Chris Jones. I'll put, a bow on, I'll put a bow on Chris Jones. If you look at the tape for the last five years, Chris Jones is the best defensive tackle in football by a sizable margin. Five years ago and four years ago, Donald was better. The last three years, Jones was better. And no one else has been this dominant every single year and that kind of consistency separates generational players um from great players even and i think one thing i really appreciate about this it should if the three super bowls weren't enough if the key role in getting to three super bowls were enough the statistics that kind of stuff my my, my sincerest hope is that he stays hungry and i think he will and is able to play at the same level he's playing at for another three years and and i think he's got a good shot at it because he'll be able to get some of those, you know, everyone loves those counting stats, right? Ooh, the most uh, blah, 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 ever, as though that somehow measures greatness because, you know, Frank Gore was better than, you know, well, never mind. We don't need to do this. But, you know, long yes, and I really liked Frank Gore, by the way. He was a really good player. But I think it solidifies and the fact that the Chiefs felt they needed to do this because the Chiefs don't think they need to do anything. They have Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. They don't need to do anything. They have Travis Kelsey, who by his own admission is too congenial a son of a gun to try to get a bigger contract because anyone else in the league would have held out by now. Like, it would have been so easy for him. Jones solidified what we've been talking about, I think, all year, that Jones is the third man. This dynasty is centered around Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey and Chris Jones, and obviously Reed and Spags for sure. But it's it's it is a triumvirate uh, to go to Roman times. It is not just Jones happens to be one of the guys that came and went during it. He is not just Tyron Matthew. He is not just Anthony Hitchens. He's not just Kendall Fuller. He's not just a name. guy. Say his name, Sam. Say his name. Know. He's he's not just Tyreek Hill. Nope. He is not. Nope. Say, say his is, name. Say his oh, name. One of the greatest <laughs> quoters of all time. He is not just Frank Clark. Yes. Yes. And so Lord. he is not. But even with guys who came in and played at an elite level for a year or two or a really high level for a year or two, he is part of the foundation. And I really hope, I know it's dumb, but I really hope this contract and the way the Chiefs handled it is demonstrative of who he is right. and maybe getting some of that recognition that I really do think he desperately wants. And you know what? People can make fun of someone wanting that kind of recognition, but if you've worked your whole life for something right. and you really feel like you've gotten there, yes, it's yeah. not the worst thing in the world to hear, yeah, you did.
Yeah. yeah. And let's not remember let, let's also remember two kids. He was drafted a year before Patrick Mahomes. And I think that also matters to Chris Jones as well. He has actually been with the franchise longer than Patrick Mahomes. You cannot forget that as well. And he's seen he's he's been a part of every step of the franchise's rise. And so to Seth's point, um his time has been coming for a long, long time. Yep. And you're not worried about year three of this deal. I know it's way far down the line, Seth, but not a concern. I really thought you were going to throw it to a break there. Um, no, I was just going to do it between topics since we kind of, I didn't, it didn't feel good to, I don't, hmm. <laughs> I was going to describe got- it. And then I heard myself describing it and decided to go ahead and back off. But I did, it didn't feel good to do the pump fake and then to still go right. back to the same trick when we knew it was all knew it was coming. So that's fair. I do think no, it would be nice if, We appreciate you supporting KC Sports Network by listening to our podcast. You have helped us become the highest ranked Chiefs podcast network in 2022 and 2023. And don't forget about our daily Substack newsletter, the best written analysis you can find on the Chiefs straight to your inbox every day. KCSN.substack.com. What is going on with Legereus Sneed, Nate? We are a couple days into this tampering, legally negotiating window, and uh, Legereus Sneed, still a chief, was out at an event today. Um, and yes. he said he wants to remain a chief. That makes sense. The Colts spent some real money at corner. The Lions already seem to have made their move. Uh, what do you know? What are you What are you willing to, to share with the people? What should we be expecting? Is Legereus Sneed going to get traded before we uh, we finish the show today? I don't believe so. Um, as you guys know, me and Diana Rossidi, my colleague from The Athletic, have spent um, a lot of time working on the Chris Jones and the Legereus Sneed portion of the Chiefs offseason, right? The offseason really begins at these two pillars of the defense. I don't believe Legereus Sneed will be traded today. Um, it could happen. I always like to say, like, I don't think something's going to happen, but of course things can change. As I said on Twitter, I have no control. But there's something very critical going on right now. The legal tampering period ends at 2.59.59 tomorrow, Central Time. And if the league actually cares, which, whatever, um, you need to be cap compliant, as some of the people say in the business which means you need to actually have either cap space or your cap space needs to be zero, zero, zero. The Chiefs, according to Over the Cap and various sites, are over the cap right now, which means a trade likely needs to happen between now and 3 o'clock tomorrow for the Chiefs to be cap compliant the trade, obviously, regarding Legereus Sneed. <clears throat> now, there's one team, gentlemen, that I've told you and Tucker through my reporting and obviously Diana's that was the mystery team. We are not going to say the mystery team's okay. name here because they, a, they Seth, appear to Seth, don't say the mystery team. They appear to... I don't think I mentioned them in the previous episodes when I Mm-mm, talked about no, how... No, you have not. <laughs> yeah. You mean... Let's take a break. Um, (laughs) uh, I know like it it depends. We'll see what the Eagles do. The Eagles could, could be the Eagles could, the Eagles could make a call tonight, but they are not the mystery team. I know some people put that out there and I understand that like the Eagles make a lot of sense from a mystery team, but we have not mentioned the mystery team's name. The mystery team appears to be disorganized. The mystery team appears to be unsure where to go next but you're right josh today's price will not be tomorrow's price and the and the market is shriveling up and if you want that second round pick well baby i suggest you get back on the phone um because the way it's looking right now is unless you're and this is where clark hunt does come into play guys he wants to know where the money that you convert from a Patrick Mahomes, where a, for instance, a Joe Tooney, uh, there's some other contracts you could play with, but like, okay, we're going to convert this much money of the, of the signing bonus towards Clark says, and what? 
Who who we do? And this what and this is do. like one of the few times I would say that's fair. It's like okay, you want me to cut a twenty million dollar check today? Right. Right. Are we signing a person with that? Correct. No, no, we're going to do something with it. <clears throat> what, what exactly? Yeah. Like, I would want to know that. The future of free agency is tough. I'd, I'd like to let, <laughs> make sure that Brett Veach has a little spending money in his pocket. Yeah, sure. But, uh, yeah, but but I'd, I'd, I'd want to hear the plan. Be like, yes, what's the plan? Is, oh, I trust you. You're my football guy. It sounds like a great plan. That that's. Clark I would want to hear the plan. Yes. Yes. What if I was cutting a check for a hundred dollars, which is like a hundred dollars to me is probably twenty million to him. Actually, you know. Yeah, I would want to know what someone's doing with a hundred dollars. <laughs> like, yeah, but if maybe I'm cheap. Josh. I need a hundred dollars. I'm I'm rebuilding. I'm building a podcast studio. I need a hundred dollars right now. I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, sure. I can I can float you a hundo. You're so, asking me this? No, I'm, sure. I'm saying if you're asking me for for this money to Aww. to improve your podcasting setup because you have too many kids or whatever, I'd be like, yeah, I can. Okay. I can float Why you a does hundo. it always? But I would, I would, listen, in that? fairness, I would I would want to know. This is a bad analogy because I would want to know what you're spending it on because <laughs> I'm the you. podcast guy. <laughs> yes. But Clark Hunt's the money guy. Right. And that's fair. Just if, sign if, the check, Clark, for the love of God. If you went to BJ and you were like, I need $100 to redo my mic setup and Josh is going to help me. And BJ was like, not until you list exactly what you're going to give. I'd be like, listen, man, we're working fair. on it here. We've been working together for a little bit. Can we not can we not build a little trust here? Um, that's the Houston, fair. by the way, kids, I know somebody, uh, ruthless. I'm your brand tell us basically. <laughs> ruthless <laughs> monk just informed me that Daniel Hunter just signed with the text. Let he me has, tell you. Um, yes, Siri, I got it. Um, <laughs> thank you, Apple Watch. Two year, forty nine million dollar deal, including forty eight million guaranteed, according to Schefter. So what, what? Why did? Why would you go to the wall on that last? We will not guarantee you. 48.9. We'll do 48. I don't, I don't know. He knows the deal has a max value of 51 million. So there's a couple million how dollars. How stupid could... this all is. Yes. The positional yes. bargaining is the dumbest thing in any profession because people set imaginary lines. barriers. Yes, imaginary and, and, lines. And, and then it becomes a pride issue. And and so anyway, I apologize. But so we've got a mystery team. We still have a. So is it safe to say, Nate? I am curious about this. Uh -huh. Is is there still more than one team interested in Sneed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, there is. There, there's more than one team interested. It's just things have getting a little bit. Things have gotten convoluted. I guess would be the word I would say. Um, but also like, man, the Texans are building a a defense in Lou Anarumo's heart. We ain't got no blue chips, but baby, these red chips gonna do damage next season with this rookie quarterback or quarterback i should say on a rookie contract um what you also have to understand too is okay clark wants to know where like how much you want to account for and again based on the amount you take now you could roll over the other part to get a even bigger spending spree 2025 2026 obviously the cap will we assume project to go up so with all that said um you want to find the right time to where luxurious is market as is as high as possible. But at the same time, you don't want to be bidding against yourself while also just doing a deal to do a deal. Right. And so I think that's something that executives deal with all the time about, and this is what's going on in Chicago too, to an even greater extent. Like we said, we were going to trade Justin Fields. It's, Tuesday, my guy. It's five thirty-five Central. What the f are we doing? Well, um, you see, ain't nobody, ain't nobody really calling us, and so if we called him, it's gonna look a certain way. And I like, hate positional bargaining. I, 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 but like, they got draft picks. But like, you know, that they looking at JJ film right now, and like, you know, JJ ain't as athletic, ain't as athletic as Justin. But you see, the problem is, we called him. They know they got a. Hey, Justin. Justin wants to be a starter. Justin ain't about that backup life yet. We ain't got him on that. JJ team McCarthy, though. the Michigan quarterback, said, so like, it's either looking <laughs> No, good. just let it happen. No, I, I actually, I didn't, I, I, I missed when we shifted from the Chiefs to the Bears. So I was like, Justin? <laughs> the bleep are we talking about? And then, then I caught up, so I apologize. Right. The analogy got away from me. I'm right. sorry. That so, was on me. So at least you're not the Bears, Kansas City. At least you're not the <clears> Bears <throat> going, hey, dog, you think we could call... Does Tennessee want a quarterback petition? I mean, not really, but like, 
I mean, they got picks, right? How many? Picks hey, we have a have? we have an outgoing chief here. Uh, Mike Garofolo tweets: The Saints have agreed to terms with former Chiefs linebacker Willie Gay to a one year deal worth a maximum of five million dollars. So, um, okay. certainly not a surprise there. We nope. expected Willie Gay was going to be heading out, and we'll talk about Drew Tranquil at some point here in the next twenty minutes. But uh, Willie Gay is on the way out, and Seth not at one of the places that's going to immediately make him an All Pro. So maybe that helps. But this is the Drew Tranquil plan, and I think Willie Gay when he tweeted earlier today. Um, acknowledge the fact that, man, I'm going to have to go the Drew Tranquil route. I need to be a starter on another team, prove my worth, and then either get a multi-year deal from that team or obviously reset my value uh, with more tape, more snaps in a different system moving forward. That is what Drew Tranquil did and honestly succeeded at a high level. Um, Mm -hmm. It's hopeful that Willie Gay, with the cap going up, gets almost essentially more money than what Drew got last year, which is a one-year, $3 million deal. He then bought, he then um, elevates himself to a three year nineteen million dollar deal um, based on how it's all framed up. Uh, so Willie will probably make somewhere in the one point three four million range would be my guess based on um, roster bonus, games played, snap count related, whatever, whatever. Um, obviously, New Orleans has to do all the funny things because they have no cap space. Um, so. Um, you the know, Saints are a lot more about vibes than cap. They just, they just mm-hmm. create. They're like, oh, we we don't worry about that. Yes. And then like everyone just says like, well, what do you mean? It's like, <laughs> ah, ah. it's like an always sunny in Philadelphia bit. You know what I mean? It's, like, ah, it, it's fine. Isn't it? It's like, well, no, no, I really think we should talk about this. Nah, it's fine. Ah, it's okay. ah, nah, nah. You know, that's nah, that's what they do. Nah. Just we we, side we note. shouldn't we shouldn't really buy a gun. We we shouldn't even go to the range. <laughs> we shouldn't even shoot one. God, did you see how that felt? How did that feel? Incredible. <laughs> this is why people like guns. Woo! Oh, um, unbe- one of the funniest, <laughs> one of the funniest episodes in sitcom television history is the gang gets into gun fever. Un freaking believable in execution. Uh, you know what I have? I have tight end three fever, and that's ooh. what Irv Smith is bringing now. We're all sick with it. We're all down with Irv Smith, and uh, the uh, the the former Bengal, I guess former Viking, then Bengal, have yes. uh, has come on over to the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, the first edition of the day today, and Dion Bush and Drew Tranquil will get to the defensive stuff here in a second. Um, but uh, but Irv Smith shows up one year deal we did get details on that but i didn't have it in front of me right there i'm gonna pull it up because i know jordan was on it if he's if jordan's still with us then he i know if if seth didn't end him i think it's in there somewhere um but i'll uh, i'll get the specific i was one point i was 1.3 million because i think that was blake bell's like exact contract correct um, was 1.3 ari mara of 1.3 million for uh irv smith uh how's that move the needle for you fellas nate uh I, it's not a uh a noah gray ousting it's not a travis kelsey long-term replacement but blake bell not under contract and jody fortson uh matt derrick i think was the first one to report that he wasn't going to get tendered which actually right. seth wrote about a little bit ago up in the newsletter that he was going to do the same thing the chiefs according to matt would still like to bring fortson back on wednesday uh but with irv smith being here now is another guy who's got some pass catching ability i wonder what that picture is going to look like nate your thoughts on uh, irv smith landing here in kansas city Real quick, Legere Sneed is probably getting traded tomorrow. Okay, I'm on it. Everybody from the Times Are era, I need a moment of silence. Because I think Jody Foster is not going to be on the roster next year. What about Jody Fortson? You calling him Jody Foster here in Only Weird Games mm-hmm. while sadly delivering that news is unfortunately perfect. I think it's I think it's time. I think it's time for both parties to to move on. Um never forget kids, Jody Fortson balled out in a game that doesn't even exist any fool. Doesn't even exist anymore, the fourth preseason game. Absolutely balled out. And so um with the signing of Irv Smith today, uh, I think this probably is the end. Again, probably. We'll see. But I think this probably means the end for Blake Bell and Jody Fortson. Um, I'm not sure the Chiefs will go into the draft with tight end as like a big priority. It might just be like the number. That's fine. Travis Kelsey keeps getting younger. <laughs> the, the, the number. I knew he was going to say that. And they keep using Noah well, Gray more and, and, more. and now and plus they they've added a bunch of wide receivers, so the burden shouldn't be as heavy on him <laughs> next year. So 
will be able to keep dropping that snap. Are they going to maybe maybe they you know, kick kinda, Justin Watson you know, to tight end? Maybe maybe make it easier for him, you know, because because it's obvious how much better he does when he's rested. <laughs> so it's a good thing they've added some playmakers to really love, help him out there. I love my friends you know? and I love this show. <laughs> really, the can I? Because I... <laughs> when you're 34, you you get tired easier. I've got two <laughs> dogs jumping on me and two dogs in this show who I can't I can't control any of the four of you. Can I read you Andy Reid's quote from the combine, Seth? Oh, uh, this God. is this this is courtesy of the athletic, i.e., me. Um, <laughs> earlier today, <laughs> I think the kind of thing to say is that. Come on, man! <laughs> it's a reporter thing to say. Shut up and let him talk. Quote for me beyond the box score. Okay, go ahead, Nate. Sorry. Incredible, <laughs> incredible. Now look, um, they're gonna say the right things, guys. To Seth and Josh's point, will they actually do the right thing? <sighs> this is quote from Andy Reid in Indianapolis last month at the Combine. Quote, every year, Noah has gotten better. Obviously, Noah Gray. <laughs> <laughs> every year, quote, <laughs> quote, every year, Noah has gotten better, and he's very close with Travis, friends, obviously. But there's not much Brett Beach is going to miss, so he keeps his eyes on all of that. I think you manage Travis the right way. There's still good production there. I wouldn't be the first one to tell him if I didn't think there was. We have to manage him the right way. You can't be in you can't be in there every rep or every play. I know you want to be, but you can't. But you're going to have a great fourth quarter. Now the context, in quote. Now, now the context of that, of course, is Andy Reid telling us at the combine, "Did you see Travis Kelsey's fourth quarter? <laughs> that zipper was all the way down." Now, the first quarter to the third quarter, we might have to use some more guys. So that's where Irv Smith comes into play, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Andy Reid said all the right things. Will he? do the right things or 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 will his tight end bump him into doing the wrong things this is why you turn into this is why you tune into the show guys this is why right here okay and look Irv Smith is younger he's 25 uh than Blake Bell uh he's capable and with the cap going up we're gonna need that number to stay the same my guy um and also Jody we love you but you just never worked out. You're gonna stay healthy. You gonna you gonna do that. You gonna you know you gonna stay healthy. I had to give advice to a to a young man not too long ago that had to end a relationship and he didn't know how to do it. And having had many relationships ended with me, I'm something of an expert on the subject. Mm. I um I just figured I'd I'd walk through that one for you, Josh. Um and and he I ultimately told him I said, look, you know, this person deserves honesty from you. They deserve that respect, and that means you're gonna have to you're gonna have to say the hard thing, and you, you look this person in the eye if they really ask why when you, you say you know I I don't think we should date anymore I, I'm really sorry, I said odds are they're gonna look you in the eye and ask you why, and if they really press you on it you have to look them in the eye and say I'm sorry I don't love you, I'm sorry I wish I did but I don't. That's wild, Seth. I don't know that that's good advice. You know, you know, Seth. They don't it's, give. They they do that through the through the use of not giving a rose anymore. That that's, that's <laughs> yeah. That's what he should have done. Give yeah. you a, I but can't give you this rose. I just and that's what I, I just can't. I, I, I want young man to. under twenty. <laughs> it's it's. I I I don't want to say too much. And so, I would just I say, know who this is now, and I, don't I would know just that say. But say more. I, I say would just more. say. I would say that that's the conversation the Chiefs had to have with Jody, and I'm sure it was tough. It's like that's Jody. That's not true. We do love Jody Ford. We love Jody. Ford we... season forever. <laughs> forever. He's oh, he's up there, kids. You see that? You see that? Look higher. That's his rafter. That is his off season hype train rafter. He earned it too. He wouldn't know he Sammy. Did. He wouldn't know Sammy Parker. Okay, he earned it. That rafter never coming down. It's in the never. trees in St. Joseph, okay? <laughs> Camp yes. legend Jody Fortson. 
His jersey is hanging at Missouri Western. I think that's Correct. that's as it should be. No one should wear 88 in training camp ever again. The greatest 88 in Chiefs history, we can all agree. Um, Seth, on Irv Smith, you you liked him a little bit coming out of the draft. Again, the thing that Nate mentioned there that I like had to double check and, and, and check myself on today was that he is 25 years old going into his age 26 season. Uh, yep. He was the 50th overall pick in 2019, which doesn't feel that long ago. Um, not been super productive, but uh, some skill set stuff you liked out of the draft? Yeah, I mean, so in terms of, and we talked about this a little bit with the breaking news team. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> so, sorry, sorry. I get choked up thinking about the, the bad <laughs> advice that I give. And so I, um, I, 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 I like the fit in the sense that the things that he showed well in college that made him an intriguing prospect for the league, a lot of people wanted him in Kansas City. And obviously his career hasn't gone quite the way people thought it would. He was a second round pick when not a lot I blame of Kirk were Cousins. Picks. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. The one problem is we saw a different tight end come in and have insane production with Kirk Cousins. So it's like, what? But that's that's a seam what's runner. The, what's the key difference between those two tight ends, Seth? It's hard to say. Um, other than the ability to to get open up the seam would be my guess. And so I would say this with, with Irv Smith. What kind of seam are we things, talking about? <laughs> some of the things that, that Smith does well are um, imitative of what Kelsey does well in terms of being able to line up in the slot, um, have a little bit of wiggle, a little bit of athleticism, run routes. Now I'm doing, and I said this during the breaking news thing, when you're doing like a skill set comparison, you're not doing a skill comparison. So when you say someone does something with a similar type of skill set, you're not saying they do it as well. So I'm not saying, oh, yeah, he's like a Kelsey replacement. No. Um, but he is a guy who can do some of those things, some of those routes that like Blake Bell can't run. And I think it could be that this is a situation where they want to be able to lean into 13 personnel and not have a situation where their third tight end is just not a receiving threat at all. And then in the meantime, see what he looks like in your room. See what he looks like as a teammate with Travis Kelsey. See if maybe you can coach him up a little better, develop him a little better in a very, in a role that really the tight end role as it exists in Kansas City, some of the routes they run, some of the things they do. Travis Kelsey's talked about this on New Heights, that Andy Reid kind of like created a position for him. It's like, what if we had like an XYZ tight end? Like rather than like anything else. And that might be something that Irv Smith can actually do that other teams aren't going to be able to lean into. You know, TJ Hawkinson doesn't run routes like that. He runs traditional tight end seam routes and does a great job with it. But that's just a different skill set and different types of quarterbacks, different types of offenses. So, I, I, I mean, I like it for that purpose, but he's, he's tight end three. They like Noah Gray. If this means that they're going to be in 13 personnel 20% instead of 10%, I'm all for it because it's going to be Rasheed Rice and Nate running routes. And I've seen Nate play ball, so maybe. Who knows? I it's hard a, to say. I can give you a five-yard stick route. I can give him one. I can give you one. Let's, let's take an interlude here. Ooh, this is no. in the rundown. We have to make time to talk about Drew Tranquil and yes. uh, and Dion Bush. Less so, but still interesting to me. But where are we, Nate, on on the fact that we're talking about pass catchers and haven't yet gotten like any wide receiver news of note? Uh, Darnell Mooney now off the market, but it's been pretty quiet for kind of that tier of wide receivers. Uh, some rumors about Calvin Ridley, maybe most likely going back to the Jags with the Patriots being interested. Hollywood Brown's still right. out there. And uh, you also, in addition to Mooney, tweeted about Curtis Samuel. So where do we stand there on the pass catchers? Hey, 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 Curtis. Hey, no. I, look, man, I know, dog. It's been, it's, been a, it's, been a, it's been a wild time. Can you stay off your phone? Can you not any... Just don't answer anybody's phone calls, texts, unless it's us, okay, baby? We we trying to work through some things. We we hey, we gotta get count compliant, okay? What's the difference between Monday and Wednesday, okay? Look, man, we we love you, we respect you. We know Eric uh, has a lot of high praise of you. Can you just not answer your phone until three o'clock on Wednesday? Okay, can you not do that? No, 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 no. Look, I know, I know. There's been out. I look, look. We know how free agency works. Look, yeah, we like Darnell Moody. We like you too. Okay, now look, one man's trash is a. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is, <laughs> can you not answer your phone 
till three o'clock on Wednesday, okay? Because if you don't, Josh Reynolds is walking glass as we speak, okay? He will walk glass to get back to a championship game. And Curtis, I understand you want to get paid, baby. We want to pay you. Clark's going to write the check. Did you see Chris Jones' tweet? Did you see it? <laughs> but also, let's not do anything until 3 o'clock Central Time on Wednesday. Now, look, Darnell Mooney did the right thing. Who am I be catching passes from? Well, he knows the answer to that. How much money? 39 million? Say no more, son. Okay, that's how this works, kids. <laughs> Who am I playing? Where am I living? And how much? I mean, I I love Matt, but we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta pack, baby, pack the bags. <laughs> we go in the hot Atlanta with Kurt bleeping cousins. Okay. <laughs> So are they just waiting on Curtis Samuel then? Is Curtis Samuel waiting on them? That's what it sounds like you're saying. I don't know hey, how to feel about that. We'll have another hey, show on hey, Thursday. Baby. We can break it down. Hey, baby, but... just don't, don't. Look, I told you, I told you. Just, just. I forgot hey. I'm always asking either directly hey, Brett hey, Beach or hey, Curtis Samuel. Hey, 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 just look. Watch a movie. Go outside. Take your girl out for a nice dinner, okay? You ain't, you ain't got to do nothing. Just hold on, we going home. Just, just, <laughs> just come on, baby. Come on, come on, okay? Because Josh Reynolds is right there. He right there. Look at him. Look at him. You haven't Josh. said, you've said Curtis Samuel and Josh Reynolds a Josh number of times. Josh Reynolds is right there, okay? He might be in the cream. That, that's technically me, but look at him. Look yep, there he is. There he is. He will take your girl if you let him, okay? He sure now, is there. Now, that is a younger, much more handsome version of me. Um, now, <laughs> all I want to say, guys, is... Is Hollywood Brown interested in, in doing anything to disrupt my life? Why are you trying to get me in trouble, Josh? Why are you trying to get me in trouble? I don't have... I don't know. Hey, I don't have that information, buddy. That's fine. That's fine. Just say that. And we can talk about your Drake with Dion Bush. I have I gave that information. You, I gave you Drew Drake I already, okay? What do you want? On me. What do you Go want? Away. Hopper. 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 Chase a ball. Hopper go, get a, Hopper, go get another tennis ball. Because you know what Maple does? Oh, you turn to the tennis channel? Cool. Let's go. Go. No, oh, I did idea. it to Maybe watch it. Novak Djokovic, not to throw the ball anymore. Hey, you want the P4s or you want the P3s? <laughs> Maple, <laughs> just go get a tennis ball and just sit on the couch and chill out, baby. I'm just trying to watch a little, you know, trying to watch a little air. air. I'm trying to watch some Sabalinka right now, but play with me with this damn tennis ball. Do you understand how free agency works? I can barely do this right now, okay? <laughs> So, Hopper, go get another tennis ball. Um, all I'm seeing is Curtis Samuel appears. Guys, look look at these words of the definition, okay? Maybe, might happen, could happen. Appears, perhaps, who knows? Curtis Samuel appears to be on the list. Curtis Samuel has waited. I don't know how long he's going to wait. Obviously, the free agent market sort of, I won't say dries up, but it sort of starts to inform you the more it goes on. Somebody got to catch passes from Patrick Mahomes, right? Right? Ideally. But to, but to Seth's point, who am I? Okay, so I'm going to cut Pat this check. Who we getting? Who? Who? I don't know those answers, guys. I don't have control. All I'm saying is, Curtis, go outside. But be a upstanding citizen and Josh Reynolds, just hold on. Okay, just just chill. <laughs> chill, guys. We're um, gonna be cap compliant that, that, by I, three o'clock on Thursday. <laughs> three o'clock on Wednesday. We Wednesday, will be cap compliant. Tomorrow. Three o'clock tomorrow. Yeah, we, we will be cap compliant. We'll we'll do our best to be cap compliant by uh about four thirty ish on Thursday when we circle back with hopefully some news Why? there to break down. Um, but I know Seth's got to go here in just a second. So, Seth, 
Drew Tranquil, three years, 19 million, 13 million fully guaranteed. We did do some breaking news coverage. Obviously, we've covered it in several places here on KCSM, but this is our first time talking about Drew Tranquil together. Um, what did you think? And is there still going to be enough money to pay Nick Bolton? The question everyone's asking. There's really no amount that's going to be enough to pay Nick Bolton. So um, <laughs> you have to just move forward. Um, but here, I, I would just say it's a great move grabbing Tranquil. Um, locking him down. He played really well in the defense. They trusted him to be the green dot guy right out of the gate, something they never trusted Willie Gay with. Um, mm. just literally 10 seconds on this, Willie Gay was arguably the best defensive player on the field against the Eagles in the Super Bowl, and I will never forget that. So um, I, I appreciate everything he's brought to the team in the last four years. You can't keep them all, and not everyone's going to be a Ring of Honor guy, but Willie Gay contributed more than I think people realize. Anyway, um, with Drew Tranquil... The one of the reasons when Nick Bolton went down for an extended period of time with injury, the defense remained elite is because is Drew Tranquil's an, an excellent linebacker who's good at everything, right? If you need someone to shoot gaps, he can shoot gaps. You need him to plug holes, he can plug holes. Two different things, mind you. Um, he even showed, I mean, I wrote about this after the AFC Championship. You need someone to line up on the edge and take on a 300 pound fullback, he'll do it. He'll, do, he'll it. do it well. And, and he's. And he's and, and he understands leverage. He's a really smart. He's athletic in coverage. He he really can do. He can do everything at a, at least a little bit above average level, and that's rarer than people think. And so I think the the contract they've got him locked in under it's more of an actual two year deal than a three year deal. And if they end up in that third year, it'll be a bargain if they want to because that would reflect that he's playing at the same level he's playing at now. Love that they're keeping him. Um, I, I, I'm, I think that's a great signing. Those are the types of guys you want to keep around. Didn't really break the bank, but did make enough money to be life-changing money for him, which, you know, hey, also, you know, shout out to Nick Allegretti, who, yes. who made life-changing money. So, oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> shout out to three-time Super Bowl champion Nick Allegretti, who played on a torn UCL in the Super Bowl, yelled you, his reaction when he had a, his UCL tear in the middle of a game blocking some of the scariest dudes in the league was, hey, I need an arm brace. Like, what kind of psychopath reacts that way? Not, ah! you know, like, like uh, that, that well, I, I love it. Well, Seth, he told me after the game in the locker room that his first thought was to his kids, his, his daughters. And that is what led him to go to a place that he didn't know he could go. Um, and he deserves every mother bleeping penny. Cause man, look at the stripes, baby, look at he, it. He he dad strength. He really did an yes. NFL injury, knowing. And by the way, in case you ever wonder if these guys view this a certain way, because guys like Nick Allegretti don't have guaranteed careers. They don't have guaranteed. And obviously, you know, he's made a, a few million dollars, which is a ton of money. And I get that, but they don't have anything waiting for them after this. And so it's all your money before you're 30. And it's so cool to me because that I think is something that a lot of dads could identify with. Um, one of my favorite quotes that I was ever told and when I was in law school, I was like, how am I supposed to keep doing this? So like, how do you do it? Well, you just do it because you have to. Mm -hmm. And that's so cool to hear that that's just like, well, I'll just do it because I have to. So shout out to Nick Allegretti. I love the Tranquil's back. Bush is great depth signing. And uh, yeah. And, and Bush probably means that um, Mike Edwards probably not back. It squeezes Mike Edwards' market to a degree because um, theoretically, Mike Edwards should be um, interested in coming back, and that you should be interested in bringing him back, given how well he played in yeah. the second half of the season. Um, the I don't know if anybody's checked, but dog, everybody looking for a job with a safety next to their name, and that is not great either. So. You're seeing it on both ends. One guy says, hey, I'm a two-time Super Bowl champion, Mike Edwards. I would like to be someone given a starting opportunity, not just because, you know, Brian Cook got injured. Totally fair, totally reasonable. Deion Bush is like, he got cut? Yeah, call, call the Chiefs. Call them. Call the Chiefs. I said call them. I can't believe, I really can't believe now, and I know Mike Edwards tweeted out something, and yes. you can't read too much into it, but he's a safety, not a wide receiver, or Chris Jones, so you can actually believe the things that he tweets, um, which, by the way, love Chris Jones, but that man will troll mercilessly on Twitter. So, but he tweeted out something about, you know, I've kind of had enough of this underrated BS, I'm a player, whatever. To me, I'm curious, 
given that was before the legal tampering period, if that was more of the Chiefs like, hey, man, you're a pretty solid safety. We appreciate what you did. Here's a, another one year, $3 million offer. And he's like, no, no, I want starting money somewhere. And they just moved on because that's the only explanation I can think of because I like Deion Bush. He's a hitter, but he hasn't played as well in this system as Edwards did last year. And for them to quickly pivot to Bush tells me that they didn't, for one reason or another, Edwards maybe wanted a little more money. And and Bush was on the practice squad this year until Brian Cook got hurt, and then he got signed up to the active roster. So right. they'll add some undrafted rookie who will be starting by week fifteen. And uh, but you've got Justin Reed, Brian Cook, and Shamari Connor. You want two, you three might, there? And, the problem is you're you might be so right. Uh, yeah, I'm not joking. Okay. Yeah, you, Dave you Merritt's so going to turn true. that guy. He's going to look like the second coming of Ed Reed in the last five yes. games of the season. We'll be like, what? Like, who's that guy? Again? Where is he? Yeah, I think, I think his name's okay, I think sense. it's I think his name's Jordan Foot. And so he, <laughs> and I brought it back around. All, all right, all I got to go. Uh, Seth's got to go. We're over an hour, and it looks like we're not going to have time to get to offseason lessons. So, uh, Nate, and I'm just Seth go ahead Kaiser. And Hello. Here. You are now Seth Kaiser. I'm Seth Kaiser. By the way, go rewatch the uh, first matchup between the Bills and the Chiefs, and you can literally see. You can't see it, but you can hear it. You can hear it with your sights. Samari Connor with the interception. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Jim Nance didn't know this man existed. Because why would he? <laughs> why would he? Because he didn't. Why know. would he? And by the way, Samari Connor, one of the most highest graded defensive players in the postseason amongst pro football focus, for what it's worth. He went from Jim Nance ruffling through his papers being like, Samari, right? Samari? Samari Connor <laughs> with the interception. To, hey, that's a really good dude. Um, all right, two things, guys. First is uh, a request. We do have more confetti. Oh boy, I've people have reached out looking for alternative methods to get in contact. <laughs> we do have additional confetti. I just wanted to make sure. I was I was pretty convinced, but again, we wanted to send all fourteen hundred envelopes through the government god bless the united states postal service we wanted to make sure those were out of our possession on their way so if you haven't received them yet they're 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 in the uh in the process of getting to you um and it's been such a joy to see people um reach out via twitter or elsewhere that they that they receive their confetti now i don't know how much we got left it's not a lot but there's some Holly is the head of confetti operations. All right. We all know this. Th this woman right here. Okay. She's the head of confetti operations. She will let you know. And then I will obviously amplify uh, when the form is back up and running because we're going to give you one more chance. Here's what I ask for those that have received confetti, please thank Holly Taylor. She's the reason you got it. All right. I came back from Baltimore after the AFC Championship game, and she was like, we doing confetti, right? We doing confetti? We doing confetti, right? And I said, you know they have to win the game. <laughs> 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 and, then, and then Holly was like, I know we're going to Vegas. How are you going to get the confetti? How are you going to carry it from one location to our house? So she's been a part of this the whole time. She deserves an immense amount of credit. Um, so that's the request. And yes, at some point the form will be, I believe, re-uploaded later this week. So keep that in and mind. Maybe we maybe we just like read that URL and on yes, Thursday, Thursday or next Tuesday's yes. episode. So it's not social media or whatever. People can just hear it here. We'll read the I'll make a bit yes. I'll make a bitly for you. How about that? Hey. Um and then secondly, I told y'all. I told you it was gonna happen. He said no. Nah. I don't need to be on cleats on a high school field. The hell you mean? <laughs> Get me on a tennis court so my Achilles will be fine. <laughs> and tape that ankle up, baby. Because you know where we going, baby? Just hold on. We're going home to Atlanta. With a, when the pen hit the paper, girl, you gonna have a hundred million dollars worth of cold cash, okay? Come holler at me, all right? How many more kids you want? We can do two more. We can do two more <laughs> because I 
Kirk Cousins got the Atlanta Falcons dreaming of the divisional round. Okay, not the Super Bowl, not the NFC Championship, the divisional round. Girl, I got them around my finger thinking about mid-January football. So, hey, I'm going to need my homeboy. Hey, make sure you catch the ball, okay, while my man is over here recording while I'm on a tennis court, not in cleats, not on a field, okay? you Does the Atlanta Falcons want to see my medical history? Get out of here. What about <laughs> a divisional round home playoff game that we didn't technically earn, but we were 9-8, and eight. and hey, Maybe the seventh seed one or the sixth seed. Who knows? Who knows? But hey, can I interest you in a Mercedes men divisional round before heartbreak comes? Hundred million dollars upon signing. He did it again, kids. I knew it at the time, which is why I screamed from the heavens. Kirk Cousins made so much money. He cannot keep getting away with this. Yet three years from now, he will do it. Mother bleeping again. Okay. Hey, after after high school field, where the tennis courts at? Where the by the way, where the indoor?